Welcome to this Wärtsilä podcast. My name is Don Pettersson and I'm joined here by Melvin Matthews, Director of New Businesses at Voyage Solutions. Wärtsilä turns 185 in 2019 and we are celebrating this milestone by introducing you to our people and their work and what has motivated them to be part of our success story. Their skills and commitment truly represent what makes our business what it is today. Hello and welcome, Melvin. Tell us what motivated you to join Eniram and Wärtsilä's Voyage Solutions. Well, so you know that I came to Wärtsilä by acquisition when Eniram got acquired. Joining Eniram was, uh, of course, a conscious choice, and I would assume it's probably not uh, the usual career choice for a traditional mariner or a captain. I, I joined it because it ticked a few boxes for me, uh, such as I wanted to work for a technology company, I wanted to work for a, a startup and in a startup environment. The, when the opportunity came, I just took it with Eniram. In the case of Voyage Solutions, it's basically what keeps me here is literally the freedom of finding business values where most people think it does not exist or it's something is hard to do. Uh, it involves a lot of creativity and imagination, rethinking things, sandboxing, and more importantly, working with an amazing team of energetic, uh, really multi-skilled, very bright, sometimes uh, opinionated, and um, really focused and result-driven bunch of people. And I can tell you it's amazing fun working with them and we have really great time making things happen. You have a background as a sea captain and have piloted all types of vessels uh, from uh, cargo ships to super tankers. Uh, how has that maritime experience helped you getting the word out about Wärtsil and our uh, smart marine ecosystem vision? It, is, it has certainly helped that I've worked in different areas of the maritime industry, from being a seafarer and captain to working for a large shipping company managing ships, to then working for a small green tech startup, and then being part of a large engineering giant like Wärtsilä with a, a rich 185-year-old history and heritage. So I suppose it gives a somewhat rounded view of the industry, especially when looked at wholesomely or from a bird's eye view. Uh, the smart marine ecosystem vision and ambition is to create sustainable societies using smart technology. And, and that's something that's very easy for me to talk about because it sort of aligns very closely with my own personal purpose and beliefs of working together, collaborating to make things happen you know, sustainably and, and, and for the greater good. So it works really well uh, with my own personal sort of mission in life. So it has been a good journey then so, so far? Oh, absolutely. It, the journey has been just amazing, the most satisfying. And, and only because the freedom to be exploratory and, you know, seeking out opportunities and creating business value is something that I absolutely thrive on. You know, success is actually addictive. However, what we are doing is exploratory and we are doing things typically not done before. Therefore, there is a lot of failure than what actually meets the eye. But it's uh, failing fast, you know, that allows us not just to learn fast, but also quickly decide what not to do. And more importantly, what not to pursue. So when we succeed, it's pure joy because it comes after a series of, you know, small, small failures. It's brilliant. Voyage Solutions uh, comprises a broad offering of solutions and services. So, thinking about uh, market trends and emerging technologies, where is the focus today? When I look at Voyage Solutions as a whole, it's it's quite uniquely positioned because it has the state-of-the-art bridge technology, bridge systems, the Nacos Platinum, and most advanced sensor technology, which came with the acquisition of Watsala Guidance Marine. Really innovative vessel traffic systems and cutting-edge simulation with Transas and and world-class data modeling and analytics that came that comes from Enira. Now, of course, they are individually best-in-class, unique, and we are developing them further. But the magic is bringing them all together seamlessly in real time that makes maritime situational awareness to a whole new level. You know, making things like remote operation, autonomous shipping uh, really possible. It is one area where most of the most incredible innovation is happening. And I wish I could, you know, go into some of the amazing game-changing stuff we are doing out there, but it's not yet ready for public consumption, unfortunately. And my mission is to reach an extent beyond just our current customer footprint, which is let's say traditionally technical departments within shipping companies to you know reach out to the industry we do not address at the moment such as maritime operations uh, freight and commodity trading let's say ship finance and maritime insurance and that's just to name a few 
So is it so now that the, the change of, sea, of the seascape in the shipping business and maritime industry is going really fast now, given that it's much software-based solutions also, so the journey from design to ready-to-use application is, is much faster? If you if you talk about data and software, it has far-reaching impact in the maritime industry, much more than what people really realize. Uh, so for example, if you, if you order a pair of shoes from your mobile uh, sitting at home, you can actually track it almost all along its entire journey to your doorstep. But the, the irony is, if you order a container full of shoes, you suddenly do not have the level of visibility or trackability. And, and that's quite a strange dichotomy. Traditional shipping companies are used to buying a ship and using it for life, let's say 25 years. Uh, it has almost entirely uh, been CapEx driven. Uh, and this is where data and software-based solutions are disrupting the way things are done in the industry. So while most shipping executives are happy and, <laughs> and really comfortable to upgrade their smartphones every, every year or uh, two, and, and maybe even do software and app updates every few days, they are beginning to realize that that's how, or that's exactly the same when it comes to software on their vessels and that needs upgrading and updating. So, th so there is a change in mindset and software and solutions are rarely sold as capex. It's usually licensed or provided as a service and, uh, and the industry is turning around to that, perhaps only exploratorily now, but uh, it's not uh, very uncommon to hear terms like shipping as a service, voyage as a service, uh, engine or equipment as a service, etc. And, and, you know, the shipping industry and ship owners and operators increasingly in engage in such discussions, which is, which is great to begin with. Mm, so there is a, the, a change ongoing there. It brings me to, to this question. Then if you look at real-time monitoring, automated solutions, artificial intelligence and so forth, I mean, there is a lot of, around the corner that will require increased connectivity, definitely increased amount of data being processed and require advanced sensor technology, as I mentioned a few. How do you envisage the future? Will there be a, kind of a differentiated market where uh, advanced solutions will be available only for the most modern fleets or? Well, uh, you know, when, when you talk about technologies such as AI and machine learning, I see them as mere enablers. And, and if they don't create value to a business, then they, are, then they will not be used or adopted, uh, you know, simply because they're amazing technology. So, so when you talk about ships, it's nothing but a metal shell and, and adding the latest portfolio of sensors and solutions can be done on, on new or retrofitted on existing fleets. And, and, you know, sensors are getting cheaper. So, and, and smaller, so it's very easy to retrofit. And I don't really think there's going to be a great differentiated market. Obviously, the new builds are going to be state-of-the-art with the latest technology. And, and as the ships age, they will need upgrading of software and sensors and being uh, fitted out with the latest technology that can improve business. So that's the underlying need that, that there has to be a business improvement. Otherwise, nobody will go for the latest technology. Would you then say that ship owners and, and uh, uh, shipping companies are they prepared to hand over controls, so to say, to intelligent vessels and autonomous uh, solutions? This is a really good question. And yes, the answer is only if there is money to be made. And secondly, if the technology is proven. And finally, if there is trust in the technology provider. The, the, the world is now changing rapidly around us. And as you know, in Varsila, we are going through a, an extraordinary transformation in mindset from say working for an engineering giant to a fast and agile as a service company but do you think there is a contradiction in there basically can an engineering giant also be fast and agile how do you see this transformation i'm afraid the answer to that question is both yes and a no and uh, the reason i say that is because i think watsala is an engineering giant dealing with equipment and machinery and uh, what we are now putting together is a smart and intelligent layer over that equipment and machinery. Uh, so the fast and agile part comes from what we can do with the data that uh, comes with all the connected machinery and equipment uh, and the value that we can create as a result in an as a service business model for this industry. And that's where the sort of contradiction comes in. So, so there's both parts of which Watsala will be part of. So the big engineering giant and the future as a service company. And I think that is a wonderful contradiction to be in. So you obviously enjoy working at Versal. What, what do you enjoy the most and uh, so far here working with us? I think, uh, you know, Watsala with its position, the impact that it can have on the industry is enormous. And it, it has equipment installed on a third of the world's fleet. It provides services to roughly half the world's fleet. 
you know being part of whatsilla machinery gives us a sense of purpose that everything we do adds up to uh, and contributes to the greater impact that whatsilla is trying to achieve so what in, in your opinion is your greatest contribution to to whatsilla i think getting the word out about whatsilla and its vision to transform the industry uh, has has been my sort of mission for the last few years and the smart marine initiative is to enable sustainable societies and get an ambitious uh, and set an ambitious goal that can you know have real positive impact so can you tell us about a particularly memorable challenge you have solved at work and i mean how your vast experience now from maritime side for instance has helped you to solve it Well there's quite a few but if I were to talk about one then there's one that stands out and then that's that's a, that's a project for which we needed about 2000 CEOs uh, to be contacted in two weeks and uh, this meant you know literally contracting 200 of them every working day uh, and the aim was to get a grasp on on two things really and that is uh, what they are considering as uh, the biggest business problem and uh, which is the emerging technology they would consider as the one to watch out for uh, and we looked at this daunting task and as as in most cases we took the usual route you know we could barely get past their executive assistants and and that was a big challenge so we had to find a way to get efficient at this task so we directly contacted about 4000 ceos uh, over social media and we got about i think roughly 2100 direct responses from the ceos and i think that was within two days and i have to admit you know past experience using social media greatly helped uh, at least in this project uh, but that was a unique case so so where do you see vertsel heading over the next uh, coming years and how do you see yourself growing with it Well, Watsila has the potential to lead the transformation in, in the maritime industry, and it has sort of embarked on a, several initiatives that are indicative of this leadership position. Over the next few few years, what Watsila has to be seen doing is executing on that grand vision for the maritime industry. And and in 15 years, I see a company that is much larger, uh, more profitable, addressing more areas and sectors than it does today. But more importantly, you know, really smart. fast and agile with with fantastic people and a, an amazing company to work for that's what what i think the company will be in 15 years so then this bring me to this question then so how would you describe your role if you can in eos one sentence <laughs> if if i were to <laughs> describe my role then i would say it's at the bleeding edge where technology meets business thank you melvin